Hello, my dear crafty friends. This is Debbie from Craft Soup, and I'm coming on today with the first of several video tutorials on how to make this darling wine bottle gnome. I shared this with you in my previous video and kind of did an overview of it. And today I'm going to show you how to pick out wine bottles, how to measure them, how to consider some of their features, and then how to cover them with the fabric that you choose. So keep in mind that I'm going to be working with this wine bottle gnome and the wine bottles in a very flat orientation. Typically these wine bottles would stand up on the surface that they sit on, but that would not be a good view for you to see this video tutorial. So I'm going to work with him laying down by my side here, and I might even have to move him out of the way every so often. The first thing I wanna just tell you is that in order to make this gnome, you're going to need my handout that's on my Etsy website, and I'll put the link in the description box below, but here is a copy of my handout. Now, believe it or not, my Etsy shop is called Christmas Festival because when I started my Etsy shop, it was only about Christmas items. Since then, I've expanded, but still, this is kind of a Christmas item so I'm going to keep it on my Christmas festival website on Etsy. Let me just quickly go through this tutorial with you. It's a five or six page tutorial. We'll figure that out as we go along. The front page is just simply the cover and it does remind you that if you can get your items on sale you can make this gnome for about three dollars if you're willing to make them in bulk. And the next page is just simply a quick description of the gnome. But then the third page is where the rubber meets the road and it starts filling you in on the materials and supplies that you need to make this gnome. The fourth page is kind of a heads up that includes topics such as craft and sewing tools that you'll need to use, some skills required, and things to know and do before you make your gnome. The next page is a fun page that shows you all of the different ways that you can comb this little gnome's beard and really customize him or her to have the look that you want him to have. And the next page is the actual hat pattern and the pattern for the bottom of the gnome and another little circle for the top of the gnome. And when I say the bottom of the gnome and the top of the gnome, let me be really clear. I don't really mean the, the bottom and the top of the gnome, but rather the bottom and the top of the wine bottle but you'll absolutely need this hat pattern to make the hat. And there are some notes on the left here about the hat pattern. For wine bottles that are 11 inches high, you're going to want to cut on the inner line right here. And for bottles that are between 11 inches and 12 inches, you're going to want to cut up and around this uh, pattern on the outer line right here at the hump of the neck. And when you cut out this pattern, make sure you cut out on the outside of the black line. If you cut on the inside of the black line, the hat will be too small. On this pattern, it does show you point A is the front of the hat, point B is the back of the hat, uh, down here is the side flap of the hat. Now we're not making hats today, but I'm telling you about this because you're going to need this page for both the hat and the two pieces that we will be using today, the circle for the bottom of the bottle and the circle for the top of the bottle. By the way, uh, the items on this whole page are meant to be cut out on felt. So that's called my handout and you will see it on my Etsy website. Let's talk about the size and shapes and preparation of the wine bottles. I have three wine bottles that I'm putting in front of me here. And at this point, I am gonna move this little bad boy out of the way so he doesn't uh, roll around in the video. And I'm going to turn these wine bottles on their side. They're probably gonna roll around a little bit. But I'm doing this because I want you to notice the different sizes and shapes of the wine bottles that can be used to make this gnome. One of the sizes and shapes is a bottle that has what I call square shoulders. They're much more extreme. The, the angle of the shoulder here is much more extreme than the slopes on these two bottles. You'll see that these are more sloped. This one turns a corner more. Both of these kinds of wine bottles will work just fine. The second thing I wanna point out is that these wine bottles are all less than 12 inches. You cannot use wine bottles that are taller than 12 inches. It just won't work. 
But what's really interesting is that not all of these bottles have the same circumference. In other words, they're not all fat in the same way. And I'm gonna turn these over and show you. They're both 750 milliliter bottles. That's the size you'll need for these gnomes. This wine bottle has a significantly smaller circumference around the bottle than this one. You can see this one's just a little bit fatter. And if I put that one down and bring this one up, this one in my left hand is even fatter. They will all work, but you need to be mindful that the wine bottle needs to have a circumference of 10 and a quarter inches or less. This piece of fabric is 10 and a half inches wide and nine inches high. And that particular dimension is listed in the handout that I talked to you about. If I take that and just roll it around the bottle, it just barely meets, barely. Now, there is some give in fabric and you could probably make this work if you wanted to but just make sure you pay attention to that. It's not a hard and fast science with this measurement, so you'll need to test it out. These are 750 milliliter bottles. They are not the large wine bottles. They're the regular size wine bottles. Okay, let's put those aside for now. Let's talk about the bottle and where it comes from and how it is to be prepared. I get my wine bottles at no cost on garbage and recycling night in my neighborhood. Uh, many people in my neighborhood drink wine and then they put their empty bottles out on the curb. And I just go around with a big old burlap handbag and I collect the wine bottles to upcycle them. Do I require that they're already washed? No, because whether or not they're washed, I bring these home and I soak them in hot soapy water and make sure that all of the wine is washed out of them. I swish them, the water around, I pour it out, I rinse it, I, I swish it again several times until I'm pretty confident that it's clean inside. Okay, do you have to remove the label? No, it's not necessary because it's going to be covered up. Sometimes there is a piece of heavy plastic paper up here. Let me show you an example. This particular wine bottle has this piece right here. It's removable and you can remove that if you want to, but you don't have to. So again, to prepare these, all you do is swish water around in here and uh, rinse it out very good and then let them dry. Let's talk about the fabric we're going to use on these wine bottles. I prefer flannel because that's probably closest to what a gnome would wear for clothing, but not necessarily. You could use 100% cotton. You could use shirting fabric, whatever you want to use. But the thicker the fabric, meaning like if it's quilted, the wider of the fabric you're going to need. So the dimensions of nine inches by 10 and a half inches really refers to flat fabric, such as flannel or cotton. Now you do wanna pay attention to the directional pattern. If you do have a directional pattern, if there's a definite top and bottom of the pattern, you want the top and the bottom to be on the long sides, the 10 and a half inch sides. You do not want the top and the bottom of the directional pattern to be on the nine inch sides. The reason for that is because, again, you're going to lay this fabric down like this and you're going to wrap it around the wine bottle like this. So the top of the pattern would need to be up here. How many wine bottles can you get out of a yard of fabric if it's 42 inches wide. And I drew this diagram to show you uh, what I'm talking about. This is a yard of fabric that's 42 inches wide. And if you divide 42 inches by four, you will get four rectangles of 10 and a half inches wide. All right? I don't know if you can see that or not, but there you go. And if you take a yard of fabric and you take that length and you divide it into four, you'll get, again, a piece of fabric that's nine inches tall. So you can actually get 16 pieces of fabric for your gnomes out of a 42 inch wide piece of fabric. 
and this is a diagram. And today we're going to work with one of those pieces of fabric. So let's go through this and see how this works. Today I'm going to use a bottle with a square shoulder. But again, you apply the fabric in the same way if you're using a wine bottle with sloped shoulders. So I'm going to turn the fabric in a tall orientation and I am going to put my wine bottle down sideways. And again, if your fabric has a directional pattern on it, you wanna make sure that the top of the pattern direction or the design, the top of the design, for instance, if it's an animal, the head would go up here and the feet would go down here. Now notice that as I put this wine bottle on here, I'm putting it on a, the middle of the fabric from top to bottom. Down here at the right side, I'm going to leave about um, three quarters of an inch. Is it exact? No, it doesn't need to be. Up here though, it's important that you uh, have the fabric placed so that the edge of the fabric is going to come up and cover most of the rounded shoulders. Let me show you. See how that fabric covers most of that uh, shoulder? That's what you want. So you want a good mix between about three quarters of an inch of fabric hanging over here, but make sure that the fabric on this side is going to cover part of the shoulders. Now at this point, you need to take your glue gun and you're not going to put glue from all the way up here to all the way down here. You're going to only put glue in between the shoulder all the way down the edge to where the three quarters of an inch uh, end is. And then just simply bring this over, make sure it's on there straight and hold it in place while the glue hardens. And I'm gonna just roll this up a little bit so you can continue to see this. Looks like I'm gonna need another stick of glue here pretty soon, so I'll just go ahead and put it in. Now again, on this edge, I am going to only put glue from mm, the bottom of the shoulder, staying as close to the edge of the fabric as I need to, down to where that three quarters of, quarters of an inch is estimated. And then the best thing I can do is just continue to roll. I'm gonna to try to keep this end straight so the edges are rolling on top of each other. And I'm just gonna roll right over the edge, kind of like a rolling pin. And there you can see the seam. Is my cutting perfect? No, and I could have done a better job. This is the back of the gnome where the two edges of the fabric meet and nobody's gonna see that. So while that hardens a little bit more, let me show you the look that we're going for. This is what we want it to look like when we're done. And so far we have the bottle covered with what we just did. Now the next part that we do, we're going to cut some slits in the bottom and fold them over the bottom and then cover them with the large piece of round felt that I showed you was in the pattern. All right, so let's get ready to do that next. To cut the slits in the fabric, I'm going to start by lifting up the overlapped part of the two edges. When I stick my scissors underneath the bottom layer of the fabric, I'm only going to let the tip of my scissors touch the bottom of the bottle. I'm not going to let my scissors go way up the bottle. My scissors are going to stop at about right here where the fabric would fold underneath the bottle. And I'm going to cut a slit that's even with the outer edge of this fabric that goes up and down the bottle. So I just made that cut and then I'm going to cut that little tab off. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want two pieces of fabric going over this edge. It's gonna make that side of the bottle just a little bit thicker and it could make the bottle sit on its surface uh, unevenly. Okay, at this point, now I'm gonna take my scissors and again, I'm not gonna let my scissors go this far up the bottle. I'm gonna just find the bottom of the bottle and I'm just going to snip that far and I'm just gonna go around the bottom of the bottle and just snipping up about three quarters of an inch because remember, when we were rolling this, that's how much was sticking out. And this is just a judgment call. Does it have to be perfect? No, but don't let the tip of your scissors go way up into the body of the bottle. Okay, I've come back around now to the place where the two edges meet. And at this point in the game, it's easiest if I take a glass and I just put 
the wine bottle down in that glass so that it can be propped up. And I'm doing this so I can show you how this is gonna work. Here you can see that if I fan these out, you can see all of my snips. And that's just how I want it. Now, I am just putting some hot glue about a third of the way around the bottle, and then quickly, I'm pulling those tabs in at an angle so they cover up the previous tab, and you can see the look I'm getting here. I'm gonna continue on, and I'm going to put a little bit more glue around, just working with small sections at a time, and then I'm going to, again, continue to pull those tabs in over the bottom edge of the bottle. And I'm just gonna hold them until they dry enough and that they're holding themselves. And then I'm going to finish up with the last two tabs. And that's what you get. And you know, there was a time when I used to just leave it at that. And that was the bottom of the bottle without the little glue strings. But I thought, well, I can make it look nicer than that. So that's when I decided to include in my pattern the size of a piece of felt that can just sit right on top of that and it just finishes it off nicely. And when people see that, they have confidence in the quality of your work. I'm just gonna put glue all the way around the bottle on the bottom, making sure there's plenty of, plenty of glue. Notice I'm not really close up to the edge because I don't want the glue oozing out. I'm just laying that piece of felt on the bottom of the bottle and I'm making sure it's sticking to that hot glue and isn't that a nice finish to the bottom of the bottle. So let's take a look at the side. Look what we have, a nice finished bottom. Now let's go on to doing the same thing on the shoulders. I'm going to find where the two ends of the fabric meet and again, I'm going to use my scissors to snip down. I'm just gonna stay even with this outer edge. I snipped down to the base of the shoulders and now I'm gonna snip this tab off. And when I say this tab, it's the under tab. It's the underside of where those two layers met. And again, I'm just going to snip down to the base of the shoulders. Notice my scissors aren't going way down in here. They're not even going this far. They're just going as far as they need to to meet about where the corner of those shoulders are. And I'm just snipping about mm, three quarters of an inch around the bottle until I come back to the beginning. And this time, when I fan it out, it's gonna look something like this. What we're going for here is to lay the felt down in a very flat manner by overlapping those tabs with each other. The end result is that the flannel follows the shape of the bottle. Notice that these tabs aren't very tall, so I'm gonna stay kind of close to where I think the tops of those tabs would be. You don't have to be perfect here. This is all gonna be covered up with the hat. Once you put that glue down though, you wanna work quickly because this glue hardens fairly quickly on the glass. All right, and before it's too hard, I like to take my hand, this hand right here, and just push up those tabs and flatten them as much as I can. I'm just putting pressure on them. And you can see that there's a little glue sticking out right there, I don't know if you can see that, it's not gonna matter because it's gonna be covered up. Let's do it again. And I'm gonna work quickly. Again, covering up a little bit of the previous tab that I've already laid down. You wanna get this as smooth as possible, but you're not gonna worry about perfection because honestly, it's not gonna show. But just do as good as you can and then take your hand Use your fingers to apply pressure and push upward to make those little flaps lay down. And I've got about three more flaps to do, so I'm gonna just finish up as far as I need to go with the glue.
All right, and there you have it, besides the glue strings. But there is an example of how you make the fabric follow the slope of the shoulders and fit snugly against the bottle. So my friends, that is the first step of putting your little gnome together. Today we covered the bottle and how to choose a bottle, talking about the size, the shape, and the preparation. We also talked about how you can get 16 robes for your gnome out of a one yard piece of fabric that's 42 inches wide. And then we also went over how to roll your fabric onto the bottle, how to finish off the bottom, and how to finish off the top so that the fabric hugs the shoulders. The one thing I forgot to share with you, and I'm going to do it now, is you do want to cover the top hole of the wine bottle. And it's not going to seem really important now, but it will come back into play when we put the hat on. So I'll explain why we're going to do this uh, at that point in the instructions. But for now, I'm just putting glue around the edge of the top. I'm not worried about perfection because it won't show, but I do want that hole covered up. Hey, I'm excited to come back for the next part and show you what happens next. Be looking for your bottles, be picking out your fabric, and I will see you next time. And by the way, if you think you're going to enjoy making this little Nomi, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell and then be looking for my follow-up videos. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day and I'll be back. Bye-bye.